Hello everyone, my name is Sumit and welcome to the third and the final part of my video series on creating a Christmas scene in Blender. In this scene, uh, in this part of the video, I will be uh, doing the final touch up in order to make the rendering much more alive than uh, it was before and by now I have successfully created the uh, an, a living room with a fireplace kept inside and a Christmas tree but that's not enough for this scene here I will be uh, in this video I will be uh, modeling the I'll be modeling with mode uh, with more objects and uh, modeling those ornaments for the Christmas tree uh, putting some stars and some crystal balls and uh, as well as using some lights and uh, then I will be adding a carpet you know to make uh, the scene much more lively with the color balance and then the final touch up to make the rendering much more realistic as possible now one thing that I have uh, done up to now uh, let me just get rid of this viewport rendering one thing I have done for uh, up to now is separate all these uh, different objects into three different layers this is actually uh, due to the fact that I don't want my rendering to start up or to take so much time or to take much time than uh, 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 as well as uh, making my work or uh, workflow as ragged because I want a smooth uh, workflow otherwise if I am combining all these objects all these highly meshed objects in a single layer it will lag my computer a lot so for the convenience of uh, the of an easy and smooth workflow I have separated them with the proper alignment with the camera I have separated them and when I will be rendering it I'll just uh, hold a shift and select all these layers and then hit render it would render as it would be with a single layer so there's no problem at all and uh, yeah let's get started with uh, modeling those uh, ornaments for the christmas tree now in order to uh, in order to get to that uh, modeling done i will select this layer because uh, this layer will be unrendered so i will go to this layer and uh, start modeling with uh, with the ornaments now there are three types of ornaments that uh, people usually uh, usually hung hang to their uh, christmas tree some of them are crystal balls or uh, ornaments ball ornaments and uh, then there is uh, stars there are stars different type of stars and uh, another thing uh, they uh, another thing they introduce with are the lights so with the ornaments i will uh, the plan of doing all these things is to create a group with the uh, where there will be stars and the christmas balls and then assigning to a group and then use them as another particle settings for the christmas tree so let me at first get modeling to the stars in order to get the stars done i'll just go and add shift a for adding a mesh and uh, here you can find that there are lots of options which is right now available for my scene which is called extras now if you don't have this this feature or this thing enabled to your uh, blender it's uh, there's nothing to worry about because these extra objects or this extra mesh is easily available in every blend file uh, or every blender application it comes with the uh, blender application as well all you have to do is go to the file and uh, click on the user preference and search for extras mesh extras and uh, just click that or just tick that and it will be enabled and set the user preference and then go ahead so for that uh, extra objects i will go to add mesh and then go to extras and here i will be selecting the simple star now the star is actually uh, modeled as a bricked or um, or a diced object and I don't want the stars to be a diced object so at first I'll be rotating it on the x-axis to about 90 degree and then rotate it along the z-axis uh, rotate along the z-axis a little bit 
until the top of the stars gets properly aligned with the Z axis. Now having these things done, I'll go to edit mode and then just, let me get rid of this. And then just uh, select these two vertices and merge them together at center. And I will repeat this process with every edge flow of these of the stars until uh, every of the edge edges will be aligned together at the center and it would look much better than uh, than that of a blocked star you will see uh, we will be doing the same thing as you know that uh, the stars actually decorations uh, decorating stars come to our uh, uh, is actually available in this shape rather than that of a blocked shape and this is a star that I'll be using and I'll be duplicating this star and create another star and I will just scale it down a little bit because this one will be the top star where uh, the star top I'll just rename it as star top because this will be a single object which will be kept just over just um, just over the Christmas tree and these stars will be the stars particles star particles because I want these stars to be generating as a hair or particles here and uh, yeah and another thing and now we will be creating the crystal balls or the balls ornaments in order to create that I will add mesh UV sphere drag it down a little bit over there scale it down something like that and then start editing it and click uh, clicking on this uh, this what do you call it uh, visible layers both side visible layer with the box selection I will select the upper three vertex flow hit E to extrude some place around this and then go to this manipulations or the scale manipulators and uh, drag on the Z axis until it gets flattened on the top something like uh, not too flat something like that and then we'll add some loop cuts right the top and the bottom so that my mesh won't get total smoothed out and uh, this was a crystal crystal ball another thing I will do <coughs> excuse me for that I'll just uh, I will be putting the point of origin of these every objects into the top of these into the top of the meshes so that uh, when it will be generated or when the particle settings will be generated I won't get any weird results so we'll do for the stars as well the same process for the stars and uh, for the or the bigger star or the top star I will just select that the same point of origin to the bottom so this was the so this is the plan of doing everything like this and yeah something like that and another thing that I'll be doing is add some modifiers to my balls which will be a solidifier subself modifier and select the shading for smooth and uh, will select this oh sorry we won't be selecting any smooth shader for these stars having these things initial steps done i will be creating the lights now so for the light i will be selecting a cylinder with eight vertices and drag that cylinder all the way over here and uh, and start editing with with this one so I'll be selecting the bottom edge flow scale it down a little bit someplace like that and then a hit extrude and then someplace like that and uh, selecting the top edge flow hit E to extrude someplace like that and then again hit E to extrude and scale it down and then hit E to extrude some place like that and then hit E to extrude scale it a little bit and then hit E to extrude and then it's done so this 
although it looks like a horrible mesh, something like a pinta bottle or some weird sub objects, I will be manipulating or I will be uh, making this one as uh, the bulb. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> it's not looking too much go uh, too good, is it? So I'll uh, let me just uh, use some of the loop cuts here so it won't get two weird results and uh, now we'll be adding a subsurf modifier to make it smoothed and uh, you can see that it's slowly turning out to be something which we call a tiny lamp and uh, I will set the origin point of the mesh to be on the top as well scale it down a little bit until like this now this I will be renaming as the tiny lamp or tiny lights and for this I will be selecting as ornament this is a very good habit to rename every of your objects or every of the mesh so that you won't get uh, you won't get lost while doing the uh, while doing the particle settings because there are lots of, of objects present in the scene while you're working with a huge uh, scene setup you will be lost if you are in if you are not renaming them now it's time for applying the materials to these uh, things for the stars let me just uh, start with the star uh, Although these are very small objects to be seen in the uh, to be seen in my renderings, yet I will be adding some details because the point of all this all this creation is to achieve as much photorealism as possible. We'll click on the new and rename it the material to be the stars. And yes, yeah, something like that. And if you haven't seen the first part of the video I highly recommend you because in the first part I have created a node group uh, with the basic diffuse and glossy materials because I will be using that uh, mixture that mixture between the diffuse and the glossy material a lot and I hate of doing repeated process over and over again so I have created a node group for that basic material and I'll be deleting this default diffuse material and add the group which is a base node group I have already renamed it and plug that shader to the surface of the material output and it's time for me to create some some random colors for these stars now as because this star will be generated as particle settings so giving the stars a very best material or a same color will be useless yeah, will be useless because of the fact that uh, these colors, the, it will be more colorful if I am adding more and more colors into the mesh. So I'll for the color of this um, of this uh, diffuse shader. The first one is the diffuse shader, and the second one is the glossy shader. Now for the color our uh, input of the first uh, or the diffuse shader, I will be using instead of a single color, I'll be using a converter color ramp for this uh, for generating the colors I'll plug that color into the color output uh, color input and uh, for the convenience let me in uh, let me introduce a sun lamp so that you can see the magic which is actually being done now st you cannot see anything right now isn't it because of the fact that the star is actually taking up the basic node setup between the black channel and the white channel so I'll be using, I'll be uh, defining some colors for the first channel. I'll be using a highly saturated red color. For the second channel, I'll be using a highly saturated green color. For the third channel, I'll be using a highly saturated blue color. And uh, for the final or the fourth channel, I'll be using highly saturated pink or a maroon a purple yeah purple would be better these are the color channels that i'll be using for the scene to or uh, i'll be using for the stars to to come up the more stars i'll be creating the more color generals 
the more color it will get now let me just delete it uh, duplicate it and let me introduce another stars and uh, it's not showing up anything why is that because of the fact that it is just a simple color ramp and uh, the the object is actually duplicating the same the same node setup for each and every every object that I'll be using so it will be useless of introducing all these colors to it but there is a huge factor which we call but if we add some random values for the factor output or for the factor of these color ramps we can get much better result let me just delete it and uh, select this one and uh, let me just in go to input and then we'll go to object info and plug random to the factor value of the of the color ramp now you can see that the star has taken up a random color and uh, why is that not too much saturated because of the fact that we have also got this glossy shader let me just turn the visibility of the glossy shader all the way to down to zero and now let me just duplicate it and we'll see a total different color the more of the particles is generated the more random values of the color will be ascribed to this to this mesh isn't it wonderful <laughs> i know it's wonderful and uh, another thing i'll uh, instead of using a linear interpolation i'll just uh, use a constant interpolation or maybe b spline b spline is better than better than uh, the linear interpolation so the color color is actually been generated but this star is actually looking too dull because it is not emitting any sparklers or emitting any sparkled material we have seen and uh, uh, we know that uh, these kind of stars have uh, glitters present in them which sparkles a lot a lot yeah so in order to introduce that sparkled effect all over its mesh i will be using uh let me just uh, let me just introduce uh, a texture which will be a noise texture now the size of the noise texture will be determining the bumpness of my of my mesh the star which is a star right now here and i'll plug the color output to the height of the bump map and connect the normal values to both for both the glossiness and the and the diffuse shader and uh, let me just uh, give it a little bit of a factor and if i'm going to the viewport rendering now you can see that my stars has got much more glossiness and uh, something is sparkling and for the scaling i'll be just uh, using 50 maybe yeah 50 seems to be good not maybe 100 to give it more more rough edge maybe 150 yeah 150 will be good enough for this and for the distortion i'll be using five well, let me see and uh, one thing that i have found out that the entire glossiness has has gone away why is that this is because we have given a hundred percent strength of the bumpness so instead of giving a hundred percent i'll be just using 25 percent that means 0.25 of the glossiness will be enough for this so there is a rough edge and uh, still it's not glowing or it's not sparkling as it should be and the way of this is just because of the fact that we have given a 30 percent of a of a flat of a flat interpolation between these uh, glossiness and uh, the diffuse shader so for the factor value of this uh, interpolation i'll use another texture which will be a voronoi texture this time and uh, for the uh, the scale of this voronoi texture will uh, determine how much of uh, how much of the glossiness and diffuse shader will be interpolated 
and let me just increase the scale to about 120 and you can see that it's actually glittering like it should be uh, and let me just introduce cells instead of instead of the intensity and uh, yep this is showing too good and let me just for an experiment let me plug the factor of the noise texture to the scale of the Voronoi texture it's just for experiments let me see and it's glowing it's glowing too well let me just go and select the intensity nope the cells would be better and for the roughness of this glossy shader i'll just go down to about zero the roughness so that everything will be glittering and uh, this has got a very good result this has brought a very good result indeed and if i'm just uh, moving the sun lamp to about the flattened ship and if i am let me see how much it is glittering right now uh, well it's it's glittering as it should be and it's quite good for the glittering effect and yay we have done with the with the glittering stars now it's time that i put the same same note for this star as well because it will also be glittered so i'll select this one and then select uh, this star press ctrl l and apply materials and then click on this little box which is uh, the four and uh, because i want this to be an independent i don't uh, i won't be generating any particles out of this star so uh, this is useless the color ramp over here is useless so i'll delete this two node setup and just give it a very base color maybe some thing like that and let me see how is it looking and it's looking quite nice yay okay and now it's time for the crystal ball or this ornaments to be applied the materials let me just save this project at first i'm feeling very happy <coughs> excuse me i'm having a sore throat now for the applying material for this crystal ball what i'll be doing i'll just again introduce the same node setup the group that i have created the base node group with the with the same color uh, interpolation between or, or the same mixture between the diffuse and the glossy shader plug that color to the surface area surface of the material output and uh, yeah for the color i'll be using a texture which will be an uh, okay for the color i'll be using a mix rgb curve and select different rgb colors for the first color channel i'll be using because i want uh, to be random i want all these values to be put random colors so i'll be using uh, different shaders or the different colors for, so i'll be using color ramp to define different colors and uh, define different colors as well for the first channel first one will be red the second one will be fully saturated green and the third one will be fully saturated blue and the second channel will be just giving the uh, something like a very some, a very dark shade something like that and uh, for the factor value of this of the mix shader how this color will be actually added so i'll be using a note setup which will be a texture now for this texture i'll be using a wave texture plug that factor to the factor of the of this mix shader and let me see how is my scene being interpolated it's looking quite nice and uh, for these color channels i'll be using input same thing object info and click on these random values so the more 
of this uh, the more color that I will be creating the more channels the more random the more particle settings or the particle will be generated for uh, the Christmas tree these will get more random colors and now for the scale and the distortion let me just uh, plug another object info for this uh, for this one or yeah something and uh, we'll just click on uh, we'll just plug the random to the random values of the scale so let me just test this one if i'm duplicating this and putting it right over there there is a random randomness in the color but it is actually not helping with the scaling okay so i'll just leave it where it is and delete this one selecting this one i'll increase the scale to about 13 maybe 10 will be good distortion a little bit detailings a little bit and the detail scale to be about two so this will create much more of the this will have much more control over the over the texture that i have applied but and but one thing that i am finding out is that it's not looking as if it is made of glass or very polished polished uh, substance it's looking like it's made of very dull thing because the because the glossiness is being reflected in a very dull manner so what i'll be giving it i'll give the roughness all the way down maybe not too much some place around this 0 0.036 will be good enough to create that extra kind of look and for the factor value of this i'll be using i'll be using a layer weight plug the facing value to the factor so it will create much more randomness color than it was before and uh, let me you can also increase the blend factor if you want but i'll leave it to its default value and uh, yeah it looks nice so let me just uh, duplicate this object and let me see whether my color is actually generated in a different way yeah it's generating in a different way and uh, another thing that i can be do uh, that i can do is uh, add another another wave texture duplicate this one and plug that over over there and introduce an rgb mix rgb node plug them to the second as well as the first channel and uh, for this one i'll be using the scale value of about 25 or maybe 5 and the distortion to be about 10 give the details to be about 5 and the detail scale to be about 5 as well and uh, we'll select saw for these for this uh, interpolate uh, for the for the text to be applied and for this factor value i'll be using another another input which will be the random as well so if i am generating or duplicating this texture let me just duplicate this texture and put it over there you can see that there is differences in the color as well as differences in the in the texture as well so if i'm going to the add well, let me just see what what seems to be good enough for the scene let me just hit on add or even multiply And there is a randomness in the in the colors yep and this is actually the one that I wanted to do 
and here it is with my stars as well as the as well as the ornaments now although this one is not looking as uh, as much contrasted or as uh, saturated with the color yet when i will be adding them as a uh, particle settings in the scene you uh, you will see that it will have a finer effect than it is right now now it's time for us to create that little lamp for this lamp to i will be using two different shaders the first one will be for the upper part where it will be a basic steel or basic uh, metallic shader so instead of diffuse shader i'll be using a glossy shader a glossy bsdf and plug that one to add uh, to the upper part and click on the sign this one will be metal and i'll be using another another material and this will be the emitter and in order to select the all these all these vertices other than that of the top i'll just go and press inverse selection the shortcut key is Control i to inverse the selection and use an emission shader for this for these vertices uh, let me find this one yeah the emission shader and uh, turn the strength up to five and i won't be giving a very dull or a very singular color instead i'll be using another node which will be a black body plug that color to the color and set the temperature to be about 2500 and let me see by clicking a sign whether my scene is getting a good interpolation or not and it's looking rather nice okay so far so good and it's time for us to save the project and use them as particle settings for this christmas tree now for the christmas tree to be generated uh, you can see that there's already a spines and uh, it's time for us to create them uh, use them as use this let me delete this one use these two objects as a different node uh, uh, as different group so i'll select my stars as well as this uh, this ornament and click on ctrl g to make it a group and rename them as ornaments and then let us go with the particle settings of this christmas tree now for the generation i don't want uh, let me just uh, go ahead and create another particle settings for this uh, for this christmas tree i'll hit on this little plus button which will enable another particle settings and rename them as ornaments and for the particle settings i'll also use ornaments and uh, set the type to here now you can see that the hairs are actually being generated all over the mesh all over the mesh and i don't want this type of feature i just want the ornaments to be set or to be hung just uh, at the edge of flow or at the uh, outside attraction of this of my christmas tree let me just decrease the value to about 50 so that i can see much more from this top view and we'll select on a weight paint and it's now time to set the weight to about 0.25 or maybe 0.3 and just paint over these outward facing branches so it's now time for us to paint let me just turn that all down and as this is a very dense mesh you can see that my painting as my painting is taking too much time it's actually been lagging it will take some time the whole point of this is to paint on the upward vertices and not and not been ascribing 
those vertices all over my mesh so a little bit of touch is needed with the paintings this wet paint whenever uh, uh, let me a little bit more yeah now it is getting a good and maybe a little bit of a thing right over there and yeah so we'll get to the object mode now we have uh, i painted some weight over my meshes and automatically you can see that there is a vertex group creating uh, created under the name group so that is the weight paint group that we have created for uh, uh, to ascribe those ornaments all over the mesh or the christmas tree now we'll uh, i'll click on this advanced button and uh, for the emitter or for the render type i'll be selecting group and the duplicate group will be obviously the ornaments and you can see that these ornaments are acting rather weird because of the fact that i haven't applied rotation and scale to my meshes let me apply rotation and scale to each and every one of them so that there won't be any problem but still it's acting rather weird because these are set on a here the the rotation value is set to be about here the initial velocity uh, initial orientation better to say yeah and i'll set that uh, orientation to be about global y which will leave all these balls to be exactly in the same position downwards and uh, for the stars as well now we will give some random size for the balls uh, let it be 0 0.25 to give it a randomness and for the size i'll be selecting 0 0.04 to make it much smaller and uh, yeah maybe 0 0.35 sorry 0 0.035 and uh, yep and i'll give because all of them is actually pointing to the same direction i'll use some random values to the rotation maybe something like that for the face i'll be clicking a little bit and for the randomness i'll be clicking 0 0.02 as well so every every one of them will be having different rotational values and uh, for the forces of the brownian i'll be selecting 0 0.02 or the brownian factor and leave it wherever it is and another thing that we have created a vertex group I'll set the density to the group that we have created and you can see that all the meshes are now entitled to the upward or the outer mesh flow of my Christmas tree and uh, now it's time to increase the number of the emission but before going there uh, okay let me just do it right now I'll set the value to about 150 and it's time to see how is my scene actually looking and uh, it's time to set this star or to move this star to the layer where my Christmas tree is and align this star to that of the Christmas tree as well just put it right over there maybe a little bit down and uh, let's scale it down a little bit even more and yep it is looking good i suppose let me just move this sun lamp to this layer as well let me see how is my how are my balls not my balls the christmas ball as well as the stars looking and one thing i found out that these balls and these ornaments as well as the stars are too huge so i'll decrease the scale even more 
maybe giving 0 0.02 and uh, yep maybe even more maybe 0 0.015 and uh, increase the random values sorry increase the random size to about 0 0.5 so as to give much more of a randomness in the sizes and here we are let me delay that one and it's now time to put a render uh, to test the scene how is it doing now i won't be uh, dragging all the elements that i've told you all before i'll be i'll not be uh, actually uh, bringing up all these meshes to the single layer instead i'll be rendering them come with a combined render or a combined layer path so click sh holding shift and selecting these three layers i'll hit f12 to render and i'll pause my video right now in order to see how is the render is done and uh, we'll continue with our work uh, let me just hit render okay i'll be back so render is done but uh, one thing i've noticed it's not looking quite nice seriously it's not looking that nice why is that so one thing that i found that uh, these balls are too microscopic <laughs> uh, yeah we seriously have to increase the size of them uh, because uh, i cannot see anything so it's now time to to increase the size of this uh, of these particles where are you now in this size this is actually a very very microscopic to be seen and uh, to solve that issue i'll increase the size to about 0 0.3 or point point uh, zero three and uh, here it is and let me just uh, without wasting time i'll just go ahead and uh, see how is my viewport rendering is looking although i can i won't be able to see the christmas leaves or the spines but yet i can i can see about i can see the sizes of this of uh, these balls and uh, another thing the stars are looking too tiny so it's not time to increase the size of the star let me just increase to about this and apply rotation and scale and now let us see how is my stars looking and now it's looking i think it's looking better so let me just hit report render in order to see how is my scene looking uh, how are my balls and the stars looking and uh, yep it's it's now looking good but for some weird cases or for some weird reason i don't know what is it the stars are actually not showing random colors instead they're just taking only one only one color note and uh, that's not good for the scene so let me go to the stars section again and uh, we'll now see why is this happening let me, free, uh, let me introduce the sun lamp and uh, just rotate them rotate this select this one it should it should show different colors and it's not looking it's not showing any color well i think that's because of the fact that the factor value of this normal as well as uh, the factor value of this 
glossiness and the color channel is actually being controlled by this Voronoi texture which is actually which is which was actually taking too much time to uh, or which was actually uh, prohibiting that color output to be generated now let me see with this settings turned on I should see some different colors and yes so one thing fixed it it was uh, just only the fact that uh, for this uh, factor output uh, uh, for this factor between the interpolation of this uh, diffuse shader and the glossy shader I used a Voronoi texture and uh, when I am plugging that noise to the Voronoi texture the actual color of uh, the the actual color of the stars were actually being hit by the shining or the or, or the glistening or the glistering effect of that I actually used for this mesh so I leave it to the Voronoi texture uh, set the interpolation to the cells coloring to about cells and the scale will be about 120 and we'll leave it right at that part and now it's uh, looking rather better than it was before let me just check this again yep it's looking quite better than it was before so maybe the stars are looking too too big isn't it so let me just scale it down a little bit someplace like this and apply rotation and scale and now let us see and this time it's looking rather nice okay so this was the this for the it was for the uh, ornamentation of the christmas tree and it's now time for us to uh, create that lighting effects for this christmas tree we'll un we'll wrap uh, this christmas tree with a set of tiny lamps yes yeah, point of it is like that so in order to create that thing or well, that uh, lighting effects I'll introduce another curve which will be instead of Bezier or any circle curve uh, uh, I will be going to curve spirals and uh, select Archimedean if you don't have these features enabled it is it will it can easily be fine it can easily be found uh, by going to the pref user preference and uh, clicking on the add-ons and search for extra curve curve extra objects and you can find that and uh, just tick them enable them save user preference and then you can find it so it's actually not an archimedean as you can see uh, it's actually uh, revealing a circled circled curve but you can tweak with the settings let me just delete it again because i accidentally turned on the edit mode the, here are lots of features for these curve spirals uh, the presets the spiral type curve type and uh, the spiral direction spiral parameters and various other settings we won't be giving to, we won't be tweaking with much uh, or all of the settings instead i'll be giving uh, with the turns to about five for the turnings or the for the turns to about five uh, still nothing achieved and it's now time for us to create uh, it it is now time for us to tweak with the radius growth with the Archimedean settings so I'll just give it the radius growth to about 0.2 uh, let us see yeah and uh, for the height to about 0 0.75 let me see whether it's actually matching my Christmas tree yeah it's matching already and for the radius it's uh, I will actually ascribe negative value of about negative 0 0.02 radius value radius growth 
negative 0.2 nope negative 0 0.02 nope what was that let me just uh, drag it uh, let's see how it is done let me just and uh, point two or the radius so it was point five <clears throat> yeah it matches the scene and now it's time for giving or ascribing one thing I'm noticing that it's actually uh, lagging a lot so I'll move this one to to some of the layers like this and uh, we'll just delete it and now it's time to create it again because it was lagging a lot and now let me just uh, give it random values some place like like this increase the radius to be about point one let me guess and just decrease the radius growth yes yeah, something like that and uh, increase the radius scale now i'll leave it right wherever it is and we'll just uh, tweak with the settings manually right now so this is the curve spiral that i have created i'll just move it to the layer where my christmas tree is align that curve to that of the christmas tree so there won't be any problem showing up while i'm creating or while i am modeling with the with that lamp and here we are just drag it up a little bit and uh, scale it ac down according to the z-axis some place like that maybe a little bit up yeah and uh, yeah it looks fantastic and now we'll move it to layer 4 now this spiral will actually act as a guide path for this lamp to create now one thing i found out that uh, one thing i've seen that the lamps or the lights which are actually used for the christmas tree are random in their rotational value so instead of using any array modifier uh, or curve modifier i'll generate another another particle uh, settings for this uh, curve spiral so i'll just convert it Right before i'll convert it to a mesh but before doing that we'll just give it a little bit of a depth maybe 0 0.001 will be enough and uh, yeah something like that and give it a full full bevel value or full fill value and then we'll convert it to a mesh and it's now time to create a particle settings let me just apply rotation and scale will create a particle settings for for this one for this curve spiral we'll rename it as lights and for the particle setting we'll also use as lights and for the number we'll just select 300 for the number and uh, we'll select here yeah We'll click on the advanced value for rotating them and uh, instead of using a group this time I'll use the render type to be about object our duplicate object will be the lights that we have created uh, let me find that out once I'm finding this and I cannot uh, tiny light here so now you can see that the lights are created accordingly or accordingly to the to the mesh that we have created but it's looking rather fake 
so we'll just give it a little bit of a tweakings with the settings the size to be will uh, determine the size to be about 0 0.03 give it a little bit uh, a very little structure uh, sorry about the howling and growling it's my cute dog she wants me to play <laughs> hey buddy little buddy it's not time to walk excuse me for that she is just a playful cute little labrador she's uh, always restless sorry about that howling and uh, we'll just click on the rotation and uh, go to the rotation tab instead of setting the initial orientation axis to about uh, velocity here we'll just determine it to be our global y now everything is now set to the y value or the value of y uh, everything is facing downward uh, so i'll give a randomness of the rotational value so that it will look uh, something uh, some more realistic for the phase i'll use some more random values as well and uh, yep it is generating a good results and let me just decrease the number to about 200 and let us see how is the scene interpolating with with the rest of the part so we'll just select each and everything and uh, hit viewport rendered you know to see how is my scene actually turning up with the christmas tree it is looking good only the fact that we have to maybe we have to scale it down to about uh, local uh, or the global x and y axis as well so we'll just click on this area this little button here and uh, maybe something like like this and scale it up a little bit and maybe the size of it is too much so we we'll just decrease the size to about 0 0.02 to give it more tiny shapes and uh, we'll give it a test render to see how the scene is interpolating with uh, with the with the meshes and i'll again pause my video because this is the part where uh, this is the actual end of if it if everything is going good then we are done with the christmas tree there are there will be some presents and rock and the final step will be to use some detailings which won't take any longer than 10 or 15 minutes so let's give it a test render i'll pause my video and we'll come back after the rendering is done okay the rendering is done and uh, although it seems quite natural for the lights to appear on the screen like this yet uh, these are not appearing as real lights uh, anyways we will uh, do those uh, editings in the compositing because i want my lamps to glow rather than that of looking like this so we will be using a different render layer and uh, make them make it or uh, make these lights glow so that's another story which will come on later and let's just now it's the time for us to decorate the place so what to do now let's add some rug or a carpet so in order to create the carpet I will just add a plane and uh, let's uh, align it with our view and let's see how is the plane seems to be interpolating with the scene uh, maybe like this and uh, rotate it on the z-axis a little bit uh, or leave it right over there okay so it's now time to create that rug or carpet so i'll just uh, drag it up a little bit and go to the edit mode extrude them to about this area or maybe just uh, leave those things part just uh, just i'll have to increase the 
height a little bit and we'll add a solidify modifier for it instead of using some different some editings so we'll just add a solidify modifier to give it a solid shape maybe there this one is good enough and we'll add a particle settings for this one create on the particle settings and select this as here and uh, for the settings i'll also rename it as a hair although it does not seems to be a hair it does not it does not resemble to be hair but uh, we'll rename it uh we'll rename it as hair instead of far and uh, one weird thing has happened that uh, all the hairs are pointing down instead of going up this is because of the fact that uh, the normals are uh, are actually set to inversed so control n to let me just uh, go to the edit mode first and select it control n and uh, still there is nothing happening so how to do it just flip it with the x to about 180 degree and the problem is solved so this is the here the settings that we have created we'll click on advanced to control more channel of it and um, one thing I'll be doing the hair length is too much so I'll decrease the hair length to about 0 0.01 and uh, let's see how is the uh, hair interpolating or interpreting with the scene and uh, it's looking rather nice and uh, we won't be doing anything else because we want a strand renderings and uh, yeah like that for the brown section 0 0.02 one is enough so as to give it a random values or random motion of the hairs and uh, we'll go to the children's under the children uh, tab we'll select interpolate it so as to create more like a rough structure and uh, yeah something like that and uh, going down to the cycle says settings for the thickness i'll be selecting as point one for the thickness of the root and that's it for the scene now we'll go to the renders tab uh, and materials tab sorry and we'll add a new material and uh, rename them as fur and uh, for the color output of the fur we'll just use dark red as a color of the fur and uh, for the material uh, for the particles tab we have also got the fur uh, enabled and that's it i think let me just uh, go ahead and see how my rug is interpreted with the scene and uh, as we can see that it's I need to increase the length of the hair a little bit more maybe something around 0 0.02 and uh, yeah that's it and we'll increase the number of the hair to about 3000 to see how the rug is actually being interpreting with the scene and uh, it's looking rather nice Uh, yeah that's it for us to create the rug and now it's time to add some more decorations now before adding the proper furniture or decorating furnitures into the scene I'll go ahead and uh, rather save this project and introduce another source of lighting or uh, the one that I was talking about in the first uh, in all these three videos about the guide lamps so in order to create the guidelines, I'll use, I'll go ahead and uh, use a light for this scene, which will be obviously a spot lamp and uh, the spot lamp will be just placed right outside the window and uh, in order to see how the spotlight is, uh, spotlight is interacting we'll click on show cone which will 
show us how the light is interacting with the scene now having this thing done i'll rotate it along with the y-axis and we'll just see how the light is interpreting with the scene and uh, there is some tweakings to be done as well just and uh, here if you uh, if you want to uh, if you want to increase and decrease the area of this or the diameter or the radius of your of your uh, what is it called ah spot lamp you can do it with the tweakings with this rotational or the size of the diameter so i'm i'm pretty much i'm pretty much uh, uh, let me at first yeah now i'm pretty much satisfied with the with the interpolation of the light this will act as a guide lamp and i'll just uh, click the light to be about dark blue and a little bit of a saturations is to be needed and let us see and we can see that we cannot see any sort of light with the scene why is that because of the fact that the area lamp here in the in the first layer the area lamp is getting is getting much more power than that of the than that of the spot lamp so i'll just drag it up a little bit maybe something like that and uh, we'll see whether yeah that wasn't smart as well let me just decrease the strength to about 200 and uh, nope 300 was good good enough there's no settings to be tweaked we'll select this lamp and we'll increase the will increase the size of this lamp even more maybe 1000 and still we cannot find anything let me just see and uh, we are starting to get some sort of a light maybe if we are increasing the the color node of the lamp maybe if i'm using 5000 of the value and uh, yeah, now we are getting a quite decent result and another thing I need to rotate it along the y-axis and more and we will add we'll duplicate this lamp and uh, select them to be a area lamp and just drag this area lamp just outside the window frame to create a portal the portal enacts us to control even more of of the outside lamp which actually comes now we will uh, increase the size to match the size of the window and we'll click on this portal so this will enable even much more command of the light which is coming through and you can see that we are getting much decent result than it was before and uh, as for the as for the spot lamp is concerned we uh, I will select I will just click on this spot lamp and uh, just decrease uh, just make it even more white tone something like that and this acts as an outside light which is hitting or which is actually uh, taking part as the moon lamp or the outside lamp which is enacting with the scene for the blend note you can tweak with the blend note but I am satisfied with whatever is actually casted here in this scene obviously now it's time for us to add a volumetric lights so i'll click on i'll click on this window or better to say this 
uh, it will be better to click on this area lamp snap my cursor to, to the selection and create let me create a cube or better to say okay let me just create uh, let, let me just select the room at first just deselect this option and select these edges and while doing that I'll be duplicating this make it parent so we have got two different object here and for this M, uh, for this room 001 for, for this vertices line of vertices I'll select as volume I'll rename it as volume go to the edit mode and uh, by selecting everything click on F to create a face and uh, yeah something like that and we'll just hit E to extrude hit uh, S to scale and uh, just like that and R to rotate on the Y axis hit E to extrude sorry and grab it until it is touched until it is touching with the carpet and uh, S to scale R to rotate on the Y axis uh, something like that and uh, yep this has created a good good area for creating that volumetric lights so this was the volume or the volumetric lights that we are talking about that I was talking about and you can see that uh, the entire scene has turned nothing the, uh, it has a, it is actually now acting as a solid mesh and for this area I'll go to the materials tab and click on this one to make it an independent selection so that uh, whatever editing I'm doing with it won't actually hurt anything with uh, the room so we'll give it a new material and uh, we won't be using any any color or any channels for the surface but we'll use two different nodes the first one will be the volume scatter plug that volume to the volume and we'll just see and for the density i'll leave it as in its default part and uh, let me see how the scene is interpolating it's interpolating quite dull so we'll just decrease the value to about 0.1 and uh, there it is with the god rays and i think i need to increase the scale a little bit of the uh, of the volume uh, of the of the spotlight so we'll just uh, decrease the value to about 0 0.08 you know to create some more channels and yep this is looking rather nice and uh, for the color i'll be selecting the full white channel or the full value of the hsv or hue saturation and value and uh, if you want you can also add uh, some volume uh, some volume absorption let me just um, play with it and let me see how the scene is actually interacting if I am creating that nope it's not acting good so there it was a mistake that I've done obviously so we'll delete the mix shader and the volume absorption shader and we'll stick to that and uh, it's no time to to send this little devil to the area where my lamp is actually present and uh, we'll increase the radius of the of the lamp even more let me just increase the radius 
and uh, let me just increase the size even more and maybe drag it okay just to go to the edit mode and uh, we'll now scale it up until it is mixing with the room or until it is interacting with the room and we we'll just deal with this and maybe if you want you can also add some more depth to the lightings something around there and yep there's the volumetric lights that we are to, that we were talking about and let me just hit shift z to see how the scene is actually interpreting interpreting and uh, it is looking rather nice only due to fa only there is one factor which is still needs to be it is still needed to be applied is that this is actually darkened so we will add uh, some more density uh, we'll just decrease the density to 0 0.01 we will see how the scene is actually interpreting maybe 0 0.05 And if I'm taking this one to be about 3000, and now we are setting it up. And if I'm decreasing the power of the area lamp to be about um, 250. Maybe 270 will be good with the warm lights. Nope, 300 was better. So this is actually the uh, the thing right now we are doing is uh, using the detailing task to increase or to suit our eyes. Uh, let me just uh, put the saturation a little bit. And let me just scale it down and uh, let's see how the scene is interpreted and um, we need to tweak it even more maybe some place around there seems to be good and uh, for this we we can add I think there is a little bit of a mistake with this see. okay let me just delete this one uh, because uh, there is a little bit of a problem with the shape now uh, with the 3d cursor in the hand I'll just create a cone instead and uh, rotate the cone according to y-axis and uh, yep and it's now time to drag it let me hit e to extrude not not e let me just grab it and increase we'll just increase the scale something like that yep until it is going away from the camera yep and uh, we'll uh, we'll go to this section grab it and drag it all the way there and you can also add uh, some loop cuts if you want where is I cannot find any loop cut to be applied let me just um, let me just increase the scale even more a little bit more or even a little bit more as well so now if I'm rendering it out I cannot see a single thing
and uh, yup nope just keep extrude it hit O to increase yep and uh, it's not time to grab them and yes to extrude or put it on scale yes to extrude I scale it S yes to scale and I think this this might help with the scene and uh, for the shading let me introduce a volume scatter plug that to the volume for the density 0.2 and let me see and this time it is getting much is bringing much better result and uh, maybe maybe i have to made a little bit of an arrangement with the scalings right in here so we'll just click on this this one or this turn the turn the proportional editing off and grab it until it reaches to the scale down here and just scale it down let me just turn on the proportional editing and uh, rotate it along the along the y-axis and until it meets the window so the point of all these things will be to uh, to grab them uh, to match with the edge flow of the window so that when it's rendered there won't be any problem with the matching of the window let me just do it manually a little bit of, of work is actually needed grab that grab it down a little bit and uh, just a little bit of a quick touch and now if I'm looking at the viewport rendering well, I can see much much better result than it was before now obviously the the light the light of my uh, what was that spot lamp is actually too too bright so I'll increase I'll just uh, go ahead and decrease the strength of the light but before doing that I also need to put this back to the point because the more it is closer the more denser it gets the more problematic you will be facing the more problems you will actually get while doing the render work so now let me just have a little bit and uh, yep it's looking rather nice now it's time for us to add some more uh, to just decrease the density even more and uh, yeah this looks fine 
okay so that's our guidance light light and let me decrease this a little bit maybe 1000 and let's see how the rendering is done yep maybe even more yeah that seems to be good and the positioning of this lamp maybe a little bit downward and a little bit of touch like that and now we can see that light is interpreting with much better much better way than it was before so we'll save here at this step and we'll continue with our modeling so this is the place that we have created uh, the this is the layer where we have created this uh, this volumetric light so we'll just move it to the first or uh, the fifth layer and we have got a living room a Christmas tree with lots of Christmas balls and lightings the fireplace the fire the what was that oh the tinsels and the lightings we have separated all this in different layers and finally we have got the outdoor lighting the guide map and if I'm rendering combining all them together we get results like this one now it will be a bit noisy because you know that uh, volumetrics actually uh, produce a much noisy lights uh, light scheme for a rendering and which is quite natural so we'll be further adding some more concepts or adding some more objects in this scene uh, in order to create it more lively or much more alive than it is right now because apart from all these colors techniques and schemes i have found uh, that this looks really dull so we'll just uh, introduce uh, we'll just continue with the editing work at first now i have forgotten to apply any materials for these railings so i'll at first put this one so for these railings i'll be just uh, i'll be introducing the same node group that i have created so going to the group this node group plug that shader to the surface and the uh, this one will be a metallic as it will be a metallic one or a metallic uh, railings so i'll give it a basic shape of black color let me see and it's actually uh, showing it's actually be uh, getting the lights down from it's actually getting the lights from the reflection so if I'm turning this all the way down it is turning black pitch black not the pitch black actually the thing that I wanted so I will be adding some rust because I found, uh, I've seen a lot of rust growing on these railings now for the roughness of this uh, of this uh, of this metallic shader I'll be using 0.12 of the roughness to give it more of a glossiness in its uh, in its structure and uh, we will be using how this interpolation is done we'll be using a nice fine texture called noise texture which actually brings a lot of a lot of uh, command while creating these realistic shaders plugging the factor to the factor and then plugging the color to the factor of this mixed or basic node group that i've created and the scale i'll be using as 100 the distortion to be about 10 uh, let me see how this noise is actually interpolated it is interpolating in a best way so i'll just play with the slider a little bit of a 
little bit of a diffuse rather than that of the glossy shader and we'll turn this one as well over there and this is the interpolation of the glossiness as well as the uh, the texture that we have created uh, or the diffused material that we have created and this noise texture will also control the bump the bumpness of this uh, railing so we'll plug the color to the height and we'll just plug the normal to the to both the normals of the diffuse and the glossiness and right we are with our with uh, let me just introduce the the fire at first in order to have a good look at the shaders and uh, it is interacting quite nice but the strength is given too much for the bumpness so i'll decrease the strength to about 0 0.2 0 0.2 will be good enough for the for the glossiness of the scene let me just put it right over there and uh, yep and i will be using some some other nodes which will act as rust over these iron bars so how to do that or how to achieve those roughness it can be controlled by the noise uh, the roughness of this let me just uh, play along with these roughness as well if I'm plugging this to the color ramp it's actually pointing a bit dark so uh, we won't be playing or fiddling along with the roughness of this glossy shader but instead I will be using another for another texture for this for the for the one that we have created the base node group instead of using the base black color I will be giving a uh, mix RGB thread plug the color to the color uh, input the first color will be a pitch black and the second one will be a rusty red yep and the factor will be used as a noise texture in as well now how the noise texture will be interpreted I will plug the factor to the factor again and uh, we will now see that we can now see that it's actually getting much of the black channel than that of the white channel because it's because of the fact that we have we are getting 100% of the noise or the 100 noise value now for the factor of this output I will be controlling another this plugging this color ramp to the factor and we can now see that we have got different interpolation or different methods of uh, uh, different interpolation between this black and the red channel so I would be plugging this one this was for the testing and now it's time to add some more noise textures to control that rust uh, to control that rust on our image so we'll be using a noise texture again and uh, use a color ramp plug the color to the factor output and color plug the color of the color ramp to the factor output of our mix shader as well now if I'm playing with the shader uh, if I'm playing with the sliders you can find that the the black one is easily generated over the red ones and I want a factor like this because I don't want my uh, the entire railings to be pure rusty so we'll be using the scale value of 50 to create some more random rust and that has been created beautifully and you can also control the color of the rust by just dragging it all the 
way towards the black channel and this will create some of the rusty textures for the distortion I'll be using uh, 12 value of the distortion to create even more distorted or maybe it was too much maybe two of the distortion will be good and yep this actually has produced much better result and we will be using this color or this one as our rusted railings so if i'm going to my camera viewport we are actually getting quite decent result so here we are and now it's time for creating some christmas present for the presents i will be again doing the entire work in a, in another in another layer so let me get rid of my camera view and here in this area I'll be using a cube scale it down just and uh, grab it along the z-axis to be our point one oops let me just apply rotation and scale as well so grab z to be one and it has gone way up to up let me just apply it over there yeah some place like that and uh, let me interact this one with and uh, yay select this bottom vertices the or the edge flow and snap my cursor to the selected and put the origin point to the 3d cursor so if i'm scaling it up and down it will be done according to the base of this get box and not from the midpoint so i'll put it right over there and maybe scale it up a little bit maybe scale it wider a little bit duplicate the same box rotate it along the z-axis something like that and scale it down and duplicating this again putting the, the third one to be about right there rotate it along the z-axis scale it even down so these are the three boxes that has been created which will act as the gift or the gift box for for our Christmas scene. Now we will be using a very simple note for a very simple modifier for each and every of these boxes but before going that I want a ribbon to be wrapped around each and every of the boxes so I'll be creating loop cuts all over all over my boxes and uh, oh let me just uh, I can do it I can just leave it right there maybe I will duplicate it later okay select this edge loop or uh, yeah edge loop and by pressing ctrl B I'll be beveling it up a little bit someplace like that and yep and duplicate this one make it apparent separate selection and we have got a ribbon and similar with this thing as well selecting this edge loop beveling it up a little bit and duplicating it and make it a separate selection so we have got a box and a ribbon i'll join this let me just scale it up a little bit someplace like that and let me just drag them down uh, someplace like that and we'll join it and create them uh, and use them as our wrapper so this is the box uh, the, this is the ribbon that we have created we'll just give them a very basic material but before doing that i'll be renaming it as ribbon giving them a very base base material of full glossiness 
we'll use a glossy bsdf and for the color i'll be using red ribbon because red ribbon are much famous than that of any other ribbons and give the gloss in you know, the, the roughness to about 0.1 which will give us much more much better result and now it's time for the gift box excuse me gift gift box it's time for the gift box to give some to get some uh, modifiers for it the first one will be a bevel giving it a bevel value so as to make less rough uh, less uh, what do you call it less pointy and much more smoother as the gift box usually does and then adding a subsurf modifier and then for the shading selecting smooth and then go to the materials tab and just create a basic shape or a basic uh, what do you call it a glossy material and uh, selecting selecting a color ramp plugging it and giving different colors for my gift boxes maybe something like that and the other one should be like that yellow the other one for something like that and for the food channel maybe something like that yeah these are the four colors that we have generated and we will be adding again uh, an object info and select click on random for the factor value so the more i will be duplicating it the more random color will come out and thus let me just uh, parent them let me just make it a group and we'll rename the group as gift box so if i let me just now interpret this group box according to the scene so we'll just duplicate them put them and like that scale them up rotate them according to the z-axis duplicate them keep them place them wherever we want maybe scale them up a little bit and rotate them on the z-axis like that and if i'm going to the render view you can see it is getting much decent results than it was before and we are getting our christmas seen rather nice and now it's time to set up my camera and add some more uh, maybe some more properties or some some more objects to the scene it can better the scene so why not use some more objects for to create uh, to make a scene look much better so let me just uh, go ahead and select this area and bring this rug let me apply the rotation and scale for this and move it to maybe something like that yeah so if i am adding some more stuff which can surprisingly increase the the dandiness of my scene why not why shouldn't i so we'll be using some more furnitures in this in the scene but let me just give it a test render and we will come back after the rendering is done and uh, one thing that i found out before going that far let me just uh, go to the fire go to the fire and uh, let's tweak with the with the color of the fire at first because i found out that the color is the color of the fire is actually getting much weird something like this may happen or may give us and let me just select some good place where i can select the fire to be and this one seems to be good maybe 
or maybe not let me just give it and uh, yep that seems to have solved the issue a little bit and yeah so we will save this project right now and i'll just give it a final test rendering in order to see how the scene is interpolated or how the scene is actually interpreted and i'll come back and we'll just uh, add some i'll just add some furnitures and uh, i'll give it a final render and finally this scene will be done uh, thanks for the patient uh, maybe you have to wait some some more and let me pause my video and video recording and i'll come back after the rendering is done okay so the rendering is finished and uh, <coughs> it's uh, looking quite nice and uh, right uh, with this rendering with this uh, very little or the grainy renderings with the very little samples of only 30 i will be jumping into the node editor to add some compositing to my render so i'll click on this button instead to have these render or this render to be uh, composited and we'll click i'll click on use notes and backdrop to add some effects on my scene so i'll uh, just uh, introduce at first i'll introduce a glare node for the light bulbs as well as the other parts or other scenes and you can see the glare node is actually interpolating with much ease but uh, instead of using streaks i'll be using fog glow and set that value to about uh yeah maybe high even high and let me see how is the scene interpolating and it's and it's interacting with the scene quite well and in order to increase the the glowing the the glow of this of these lights i can also use some other channels which will be if i'm using a color node or a color balance for this scene i can even have some more command over this glow let the uh, the first lift value will be i'll be generating some more yellowish tone let it do the render work and uh, for the gamma i will increase the uh, value of the gamma gamma a little bit with a uh, red tone something some red tone will be given so as to create more warmth maybe it was too much let me just decrease the value a little bit And increase the red tone so to create a little bit a little warm type of a color and uh, for the gain value I'll be giving a little bit of a blue bluish tone which will interact with obviously the yellow channel and uh, increase the value a little bit and uh, yep now it's only about the size let me just increase the size to about nine of this of these glare nodes or the glare effects that has been created and uh, already my computer is taking some time maybe maybe 12 will be good sorry it is said to be about nine yeah it's said to be about nine that's funny 
I didn't know that. I admit, I didn't know that. I don't do much of a work with the compositing. It, it actually, uh, it actually is a bit confusing. Okay, for the threshold, I will be giving 0.8 so as to give much more room of this glare, of these glaring effects to take place. So I'll just increase or uh, decrease the threshold, which will increase some more lighting values all over my scene and uh, here it is now i can also use the same channel or the same value i will use um, let me just use a mix node instead and we'll duplicate this one plug the color to this one and uh, instead of fog glue we'll use streaks and connect this one to the image and put the factor value to be our 0 0.6 and now let us see how our compositing is done it will take some time because we have done a lot of things and we have to be patient a little bit of patience is needed come on compositor and here we are it's looking rather nice and the only thing that i will uh, i will be doing with the with the streaks the streaks are given four instead or uh, and the iterations are set to power three if i'm decreasing the value of iterations it will uh, it will create much more of an impact I suppose let me see yep but it's not looking too good so I'll stick with the iteration maybe I'll go with four iterations and just it's all about the the eyes it's all about how it how the scene is interacting and how do you like your scene to be represented now obviously this is a very low sampled image so the much of the detailing is uh, absent in the scene but uh, trust me on this it will look much better when you are rendering the scene with the higher samples so i am satisfied with these uh, lightings i'll just save it and uh, we'll go back now this time this is the rendering that uh, we have created and we will now give it a, f uh, a test render with the higher samples to see how the how these are actually interacting now in order to speed up my uh, renderings renderings actually what I'll be doing I'll just decrease the bounces from maximum 12 to 4 and minimum to be out one and for the diffuse channel i'll be using one the glossy to be one and for the transmission i'll be giving four and the volume to be about zero whatever it's given and yep that's what it is all about and i will pause the video and this is the final test rendering and after that we will i will add some more attributes or some more objects in order to create some the scene look much more effective so we'll pause the video right now i don't want to brag this tutorial longer because i've already taken you know i know i don't know maybe two two hours of it two and a half hours is going to be achieved so i'll be pausing my video right now so the rendering is finished and uh, you can uh, see that the image is looking very good uh, with these uh, increased samples although the samples is uh, 100 set to 100 but it's uh, good enough for this tutorial scene and uh, while adding some more objects like this uh, all i did was i had created several assets in my hard drive or the folder and just linked those objects in this scene uh, i don't want to give uh, i don't want to uh, brag this tutorial long enough by showing how to create all these sofas settings and the picture photo frame because this will elongate more and more 
uh, and you will get bored eventually so uh, if you are interested uh, in uh, in uh, knowing how to create all these assets uh, if you want to know about them uh, leave it in the comment section and I will definitely bring on another bring out another video of creating these assets uh, one by one and uh, how to use them in a scene so and yeah there are lots of tutorials available in the internet and with these uh, objects introduced uh, we get this kind of a result which is actually looking rather nice and uh, yeah this concludes the tutorial I'm Sumit hope you guys like this video and uh, uh, this was specially done for the Christmas scene and yeah that's what is this all about Merry Christmas to you all if you like my videos and want some more of the videos produced by me uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'm very very much thankful to all of you who has already subscribed and given me a, such a positive feedback because it supports me as well it appreciates me as well uh, a huge deal it's a huge deal it's a big deal for me anyways uh, so long till now Merry Christmas and um, yeah this ends the tutorial Beep, be happy and I hope all of you get uh, all of you get much happier uh, all of you get much positive result in this Christmas uh, Christmas is about happiness and colorful thing isn't it okay so until then I'm Sumit Bye.